Hello everyone, this is Dennis and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today we will review such a multimeter for lithium and nickel batteries. The multimeter is small, but very useful and visually, as everyone has probably already noticed, it looks like a pager. On the front there is a large display and three buttons. There are two connectors on the right side. Lithium batteries are inserted into the first, and nickel batteries into the other. There's nothing on the back, just a flat lid. This multimeter can be used in many cases. Let's say you have some kind of battery, whether it has a protection board or not. But one fine day you wanted to monitor the voltage on each cell or you simply wanted to add an indication of the charge of the entire battery in order to somehow understand how much energy was left in all the batteries. By adding this multimeter you can significantly increase the functionality of the entire battery. The multimeter is connected in the same way as the BMS to each battery. After this, you can look at the voltage of each cell, the total voltage, the difference between the batteries and, most importantly, balance them. It turns out something like an almost smart BMS, only without a phone, computer and Bluetooth. The multimeter can accept 1 to 7 lithium batteries and 4 to 7 nickel batteries. Let's see what's inside. The device body consists of two halves connected by four screws. There are many radio components located on the front side of the board. There is nothing on the back. Most of the board is covered by the display. It is glued onto a small foam pad. On the left is an unmarked chip and a speaker. It squeaks very loudly and so then I sealed it with tape. Most of the board is dotted with small resistors and transistors. This is a balancing unit. During balancing, these resistors heat up. On the right are the terminals where the batteries are connected. They are connected in this order. They are counted from right to left. On the left are lithium, and on the right are nickel. The rightmost pins on both connectors are considered negative. All the rest are conditionally considered pluses. On nickel batteries everything is easy, you only connect the plus and minus. I'll tell you why exactly this is a little later. On lithium batteries, you must first turn on all the positives, and at the end the negative. Only then does the multimeter turn on and find out how many batteries are connected to it. This is the case if the connected wires are located separately. If all the wires are on one connector, then it can be turned on immediately. If there are fewer batteries, for example only two, then you need to connect from the corresponding terminal and end there at the negative. The multimeter does not have its own power source. On the one hand this is good, but on the other hand it is bad. If only one battery is connected, the multimeter is powered by it. If two batteries are connected, the multimeter will run on both of them. If more batteries are connected, the multimeter will still work from the first two. This must be taken into account, since although the device is very small and has an LCD display, it still consumes current during operation. Even without a load connected to the batteries, the first two batteries will still discharge over time. If you want the multimeter to be constantly connected to the battery but not work, you can install a switch. It will be located on the right according to the diagram in the minus circuit. When the multimeter is disconnected, a current of about 3 microamps leaves each battery. The second battery has a slightly higher current, 7 microamps. Apparently the circuit there is slightly different, since it is in the power supply circuit of the multimeter. With such a small current, even this battery will lose only 5 milliamp hours in a month. Therefore, if you leave the battery with the multimeter connected for a long time, you don't have to be afraid that they will run out. To demonstrate how the multimeter works, I will connect three lithium ion batteries. As I said above, I start connecting the batteries with the positives. After connecting the negative of the entire battery, the multimeter turns on and emits a signal.
Now let's take a closer look at the functions of the multimeter. The display displays various data. There is not much of it, so you won't get confused. The top line displays the serial number of the battery cell. The left column shows the battery type. In the middle, the voltage of either the entire battery or one cell is displayed. The word total is only included when the voltage of the entire battery is displayed. In the lower right corner, the charge level is displayed as a percentage. And here the same thing is displayed, but in the form of geometric shapes. From a distance, it's easier to determine the charge level than to look at the numbers. By pressing the first button, you can select the battery type. Polymer, iron, phosphate, and ionic. You need to choose the battery that is currently connected to you. The multimeter itself cannot calculate which battery you have connected. It simply sees some unknown current source. Although all of these batteries contain lithium, they all have different minimum and maximum voltages. Notice that when I change the battery type on the right, the charge level displayed as a percentage also changes. To find out what charge is in my batteries, I need to select lithium ion. Lithium polymer batteries have the highest voltage. So now the multimeter shows as if the battery is undercharged. And lithium iron phosphate has the lowest voltage, so the multimeter shows a full charge of 99%. By holding down the type button for a couple of seconds, the multimeter beeps twice. This method enables balancing of batteries. But now it does not start, since the battery voltage is approximately the same. I'll show you how it works a little later. If you press the cell button, the display will begin to display the voltages of all battery cells. The batteries are changed one by one, from the first to the seventh. The serial number of the battery in the battery is displayed at the top. But if there are fewer batteries connected, as I have now, then only they will be shown. After I scrolled through all the batteries, the full battery voltage is displayed again. Now let's move on to the mode button. If I click it, I get to a page where the difference between the batteries is displayed. The most charged and the most discharged. In this case, the difference between the batteries is only 2 millivolts. Between the first and third cell. In general, there are some problems with measuring very low voltages on this multimeter. If you look at the battery voltage, sometimes it can change, sometimes more, sometimes less. Doesn't change much, plus or minus 10 millivolts. Therefore, the difference between batteries is also not entirely accurate. Now it can show one thing, and after 5 seconds it's another. Therefore, in this case, I don't really believe in a difference of 2 millivolts. This is easy to verify if you rewind the video. The battery voltages were completely different. Although perhaps this problem can be corrected by taking a tighter terminal block or soldering the wires to the multimeter. If you press mode again, the voltage of the most charged battery will be displayed. I press it again and it shows the voltage of the most discharged battery. After the next press, the total battery voltage is displayed again. If you further press the mode button, all pages will change in a circle. Now let's see what happens if we disconnect the batteries. I disconnected the last two wires. In theory now the current should not come from the third and second batteries. We look at the voltage on the cells. On the first one there is, but on the second and third there is nothing, as expected. The total battery voltage is equal to one battery. Please note that the device still thinks that three cells are connected. If the batteries are connected back, the voltage on the empty cells is restored. If the battery power is left in place, on the first and second terminals, and other batteries are accidentally connected in the wrong place or in a different sequence, then the multimeter will do nothing. The multimeter will work in this case, but will show the wrong voltage and number of cells involved. For example, it shows that there are 7 batteries. The total voltage is 16, 
although it should be 12.4. Some cells are empty, and one has 8 volts. If the multimeter is not turned off and all batteries are placed in the correct sequence, then the multimeter will correctly determine the voltage of the occupied cells and the total voltage. But those cells that were activated before will still remain. There will be zero voltage on them. To put the multimeter into normal operation mode, you need to disconnect the first minus terminal and connect it again. After this, the multimeter will show the number of batteries that are connected. Now let's see how much current the multimeter consumes for its operation. The multimeter on the right will show the current strength. The negative of the battery is connected through it. The minus comes out of the multimeter and goes to the first terminal of the multimeter for batteries. I turn it on. At 12 volts, the battery multimeter draws 9 milliamps. If you disconnect a pair of batteries, the multimeter will only work on one battery. At the same time, the current will decrease and become slightly more than 4 milliamps. When pressing the buttons, the current jumps a little. Additional current is consumed by the speaker, which is activated when the keys are pressed. Now let's see how balancing works and how much current it consumes. The voltage of all batteries is now approximately the same. Therefore, for balancing to begin, I need to discharge one of the batteries. For this, I will use a resistor like this. I'll connect it in parallel with the second battery. The batteries are not the newest and therefore the voltage that is now displayed on this multimeter will immediately drop. Now you need to wait a while for the battery to drain. I disconnect the resistor. The tension rises a little. The first and third batteries now have more voltage, since I only discharged the second one. Therefore, when balancing begins, the multimeter will only open the first and third batteries to equalize the voltage with the second. Now I hold down the type button. The multimeter beeps for a long time and balancing begins. Please note that current consumption has increased to 23 milliamps. Now the excess energy will be dissipated on the balancing resistors. During balancing, the display shows the voltages of all batteries in turn. The slideshow will stop when balancing is complete. During balancing, the multimeter board gets quite hot, but fortunately I did not notice any malfunctions in the operation of the multimeter. Next, let's see how nickel batteries are connected to this multimeter. I will use nickel cadmium. Nickel batteries are supposed to be connected here. Minus the top pin, plus the middle one. All batteries are connected in series. Here, the multimeter cannot see the voltage of each individual battery. The multimeter turns on immediately. An inscription appeared in the upper left corner stating that nickel batteries are connected. Based on the voltage level, the multimeter realized that there were four of them. The type key does not work in this mode. Pressing it does not change anything. The cell key doesn't do anything either. At the top it looks like pages 4 through 7 of batteries are scrolling through, although in fact they are not connected. When you press the mode button, nothing changes either. There is a third pin in this connector. If you connect batteries to it with any polarity, the multimeter does not turn on. If you know what this output is for, then write in the comments. A 
A battery of nickel batteries can be connected not only to the connector intended by the developers, but also to the one where lithium batteries are connected. The multimeter also turns on and displays the voltage of the entire battery, but since only two terminals are occupied, it thinks that only one battery is connected, just with a higher voltage. On one cell of lithium batteries, the multimeter can display a voltage of no more than 6 volts. Therefore, if you have more nickel batteries, you will still have to connect them to the appropriate connector. When powered by only one battery, the multimeter performs very poorly. We can say that it is not even intended for this. Voltage up to 4 volts shows approximately correctly, but below the measurements are greatly distorted. The multimeter shows an image up to about 3 volts, but the measurements are no longer correct. But even in this case, the multimeter still works. If you turn it sideways, you can see that it shows a little. Therefore, the battery should not be left connected, otherwise it may be completely discharged. Now let's do it a little differently. Instead of the first battery there will be a converter. It is set to 6 volts. And instead of a second battery there will be a real battery. The multimeter shows a total voltage of 10 volts. The first cell has 6 volts, and the second cell has almost 4.1. Now I will lower the voltage on the converter. On the multimeter at this time they will also begin to fall. This way, the readings from both devices can be compared. Now both devices show a voltage of 5 volts. The difference between them is very small. But it's impossible to say which one shows the exact voltage, since I don't have any reference voltmeter with which to compare. At 4.2 volts the difference is about the same. The voltage on the second battery did not change. The nominal voltage of a lithium-ion battery also shows approximately the same error, only 17 millivolts. On the second battery it now shows 3 millivolts more than last time. The overall tension decreases as expected. I continue to lower the voltage. At a voltage of 3 volts, the difference is also small 16 millivolts. The voltage of the second battery is almost 4.1 volts, and the total is 7. At 2.5 volts the difference is very small, only 2 millivolts. The voltage of the second battery has not changed. At 2 volts the difference is also small, only 6 millivolts. On the second battery the voltage does not change, but the total is 6. A very low voltage of 1 volt shows almost the same. The minimum voltage for my converter is 0.6 volts. The battery multimeter shows it exactly the same. As you can see, the battery multimeter measures voltage quite well. Even when they are very discharged. The multimeter can also be used as a regular voltmeter. For example, you can measure the voltage of a conventional lead-acid battery. Voltage 10.3 volts, discharged. If you change the polarity and also connect it to the battery, then the multimeter will do nothing. Here I used a connector for nickel batteries. Now let's see what happens if we measure the voltage of such a battery in the connector of lithium batteries. 
The maximum voltage that it can show for one cell is only 6 volts. If you change the wires, then the multimeter will also do nothing. It will not burn out. The measurement range for lithium batteries can be made a little larger if you use the first and third pins. This way the multimeter will think that two batteries are connected. Now everything shows correctly, 10.3 volts. But the maximum voltage here will most likely be only 12 volts, since for one it was 6. If the negative terminal is left in place, and the positive terminal is moved further along the connector for lithium batteries, then the multimeter will no longer work here. The multimeter comes with a small set. It is sent in a cardboard box like this and comes with small instructions. It can be downloaded from the link in the description. The instructions say that this device is called Cell Meter 7, version 2. AliExpress also sells Cell Meter 8. In Poland, it is intended for radio controlled models for testing their batteries and servos. It has more functions, many of which are not needed by the average person but it does have a backlit screen. For all these advantages, of course, you have to pay more. This multimeter has been produced for many years and therefore you can find old reviews of it on the internet. It looked exactly the same before, but there was no balancing and the boards looked different inside. Most likely this was the first version, but it's probably not on sale for a long time. Although the multimeter says, capacity controller, in fact, this device cannot measure the battery capacity. It only shows the voltage and charge level, which is also calculated based on the voltage. Therefore, if you want to know the capacity of your batteries, then you will need some other device. The link to the store where I bought the multimeter will be in the description. That's all for today, bye everyone.